What's going on, everybody? My name is Danny Fry. My name is Parker Ament. We are Excellent Sound, and we are here with Waz Wazerson himself, the, the famous reporter, also on the side, on the weekends, also a professional DJ, music producer. Waz Wazerson. Where is that from? I've definitely done that before. You're Waz Wazerson, yeah. the reporter. Yeah. yeah, the reporter. What did Twitch. I do that on? You did that on, on, on Twitch. Twitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and you had the voice changer. Waz yeah. Wazerson. Never, we're Jaws. never forget. He's going to open up some uh, some awesome project files. Uh, we just had an amazing podcast. Everything went great. Make sure you guys go check that out. But for now, we're going to be talking about production. We're going to get a little bit more in depth. Thank you for bringing your shit. This is going to be super sick. Yeah, cool. Let's go over, um, I don't know, what, is there something that you're like maybe excited about that the people, or maybe something that you've just released recently that would be super sick to show? Um, I mean, I guess we could, oh, kick drum. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> Stoked about the new Ableton. Yeah, we were Update. just talking about the new Ableton updates, which is super fire. We should go over my single that just came out. Oh, uh, he's a pro. For a little bit. So uh, I was kind of talking to you guys about this off camera, but for those of you that are just joining us, this is a record that I'm doing uh, like kind of like for the Golden State Warriors. I would say more like with in partnership with right super um, cool yeah they actually have i i learned this in the process of making this song but they have their own record label oh, and wow. they do a lot of cool like music shit that's um, awesome i mean i've I, I grew up in the bay area you know i've always been a warriors fan go dubs and we just ended up having this opportunity where they reached out and were like hey it'd be really awesome if you wanted to make a song and we'll play it every home game after halftime as like the like let's get pumped up for the second half of the game kind of shit that's dope and i was like yeah fuck yeah let's do it hell yeah um and so i knew from the jump that i wanted to have some sort of bay area rapper on it and i ended up working with this dude oh, cool uh called named pilo who's a legend in bay area rap he's also a very successful rapper outside of the bay area um and he's he's done a lot of shit with the warriors too been a fan of him for a long time the warriors kind of had like a like here's the kind of vibe that we think makes sense so i had a couple ideas they were like we think this one is the like strongest out of the ideas i was like all right bet but i kind of knew that it wasn't pilo's vibe mm -hmm. and i was like well i don't really know if this is gonna work but like let's try it and i actually reworked the song it's not even this like, it's not even close to what this is. But I, like, made it a little bit more friendly to rap on, at least. And he came in, and we cut a whole song, spent, like, two hours writing, recording, doing a whole record, and we were basically done. And then we just kind of had time to, like, fuck around. And we're just sitting there, and I was like, yeah, like, this is cool. But, like, I also had this idea where, like, I thought it'd be really cool to sample some sort of iconic Bay Area like hip hop record. Wow. And naturally him being a rapper from the Bay Area, he thought that that was a really cool idea. So he bounced ideas back and forth just like literally like playing songs back and forth like handing each other the ox literally. And I can't remember which one of us came up with it, but uh we landed on this record that you guys probably don't know. I don't know if it was really like a big hit outside of the Bay, but when I was growing up this record was massive. It's called Don't Lose Your Head by Zion I. No idea. I know Zion I. Yeah. Um, fun fact, Zion I performed at my high school's uh, prom oh, the year I was a senior. That's so sick. Yeah. I didn't know he was from the Bay. Yeah. So Zion I, uh, RIP, has passed a while ago, but Amp Live, who's the producer of Zion I, actually worked with like a lot of like electronic artists from the bay and like kind of oh, had wow. like a dubstep thing going on for a minute oh cool um so shout out shout out amp uh but yeah so like we we kind of like i almost did the like prototypical like you know what's hot right now is like people take these 90s records and then like yeah. turn them into dance records yeah and i was like okay like what if i could do that but like do it in like a much natch more natural like cool kind of way um so a lot of the like instrumentation and stuff is very synonymous with the original record. Um, but then P's vocals are all like, you know, fresh. Dope. That's really cool. Um, and then, yeah, I made like a drop. 
And uh, let's just listen to it, and then we can kind of dive in. Yeah, so You can ask some questions or whatever. Don't lose your head. Wake up. Gotta hide in the city. If it's by Guala, get with me. Putting it on spiffy. We really the problem, if any. Do you understand? Do you feel me? Lock in when it get risky. Gassed up, never on empty. Lock in when it get risky. Two turns up, I don't feel no ways. If you ask me, I'm gon' get paid. Even if you don't, still gon' get K. All in the door, going three times crazy. All in the door, like key. Then boy, seven days week. We kept every receipt. California hot boy, cutting on the heat. kind of the idea. dude that's sick yeah that's sick dude so Thank you. I, i'm curious is so so you had a session booked you did it you did what they wanted and then you guys end up actually making the real song yeah and then you show them this afterwards you're like hey this is cool but this is this is. yeah they never even heard the first one. Oh, you didn't even oh so even after we thought, wrote this it was so much stronger than right. what we originally made that i was like this isn't even fucking worth their time so when they heard this were they just like Yes. Yeah, they were like, "This is great, cool." Yeah, it's it's it for sure feels like I mean, a halftime. Also, pipe. also like there were many iterations of this song mm -hmm. that didn't sound anything like this. Oh, okay. This actually was like there were like a lot of different drops that like here. I wonder if I can go through and find one of the older drops. I honestly have no idea what this even is going to sound like. So <laughs> brace yourselves. <Let's> find out. <laughs> That was so that was the first idea they heard. They yeah. were like, great. And I was like, I guess this version admittedly sounds a little bit more like like a jaws yeah. record. But the more I listened to it, I was like, there's nothing special about it. Like I can't hear it going well at the stadium mm -hmm. i can't hear myself playing it at a show and it getting a reaction like it was it felt really forced so i went through like 10 different drop ideas that being one of them wow and then when i finally got to this which is the final product which like admittedly is like much more tame and like subdued but like when i heard it as a full piece i was like this makes sense that's interesting too because i think like a lot of people don't realize too is like also working with on, on the side is working with a client though too i mean technically the warriors are wanting to be a part of the actual songwriting yeah, process yeah. and they're not i know they have a record label but that's like not their main gig their main gig is putting on sporting events you know yeah like, and also like their record label is very like hip-hop focused because yeah like, basketball is a very yeah hip-hop rock focused you know demographic which also kind of informed how i wrote the song because mm -hmm. like there's two sides of it like one is like it should be high energy because you're playing it in a stadium to hype people up. Yeah. But also, like, I wanted it to kind of feel like something that, like, if you weren't a fucking raver and you heard it yeah. at the stadium or on the radio or whatever, you're a fan of Pilos or you're just a fan of the Warriors. You could also hear it. Right. And be like, this is pretty cool. I mean, even, like, listening back to that old version, like, I still like this version more just because, like, it just feels more, like, complete. Mm -hmm. I'm sure my fans, like, if there's some, one of my fans who like watches this they're probably like that version was way more cooler <laughs> but <Yeah>. like <laughs> that's not necessarily who you're making it for at the same time it's, well you and i'm also like i'm it, also too. making it for me right? right i'm i'm kind of like an all or nothing guy mm -hmm. you know like if i'm gonna make it a banger i really want to make it a banger mm -hmm. and that version of it felt like i was like making a half-ass kind of banger yeah right i know what you're saying you always got to go full banger 
Yeah. yeah. You can't go half bang. Yeah. <laughs> go yeah. full bang. Um, so when you work with somebody like the Warriors, like, do they, like, do you negotiate, like, do I get free season tickets for life now? Because I feel like that's, like, appropriate. That's a given. No, right? no. Floor but, seats. But, like, I mean, they they are have been super cool to work with. Like, I was just up in San Francisco uh not last weekend but the weekend before that we were filming a music video like they opened up the chase center which is the arena for the warriors oh, to us so we could film oh i saw the clip on your instagram yeah like we got there. to That's use really their fucking cool. jumbotron and like they did all this cool shit for us i'm gonna go back up for a couple games and like do some shit like i can't ask this of them all i really care about is i just want to meet the guys yeah the players just because cool. i'm such a big fan and like maybe it'll happen maybe it won't but it's been a really cool experience either way it's awesome did like, you get the hat for free at least? A uh, discount. Okay. Discount. Okay. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious too. One thing I noticed too is is the drums are very very. We we've all we people don't know this, but behind the scenes we've had a lot of conversations about drums and what undercooked round is what you like to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, these ones feel uh, or crispy, right? Right. The drums are really really coming through really nice. So I'm just curious like what like processing you did on the drums. Uh, Maybe let's, you could talk let's about find that. Out. A little bit. And I like that bass too. I want to talk about that that one, that downbeat okay. bass too. The like Redux one. Uh they're all the same bass, but we'll get there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm I sorry. Like we'll get there. I like that. Oh, this hat sounds so crispy. There's not really all that much going on. Hat group. This is my big secret is I just fucking layer a bunch of loops <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh these ones that? aren't even on what do these sound like oh that's that's when the drums were super swingy what is all this new shit that, wait hold on how much new shit is in the new ableton there's what the fuck is that a drum break? you don't you don't use roar the fuck is roar bro i just like got a, it so I don't it's like a distortion it. no that, that was roar roar's been on 12 for a minute bro what the fuck is roar it's the best it's it's it, you should never use saturator ever again. But the new saturator is sick though, right? Yeah, but Roar You're is saying more as sick. as like a distortion. They they do. Like, we'll we'll get into the weeds okay. on that in a little bit. Uh, so I mean, it's just yeah, those are crispy. Ooh. They're coming out so well. So what we got on there, Sam. Okay. There we go. Oh man, I don't even want to tell people about this shit, but <laughs> that's okay. But if you if you don't, I know there was something to if it. If you don't, uh, <laughs> it's like it's not just samples, bro. I know what just samples sound like. Well, no, it's it's not even just this. We can a b it with this on and off, but just the Mister Bill's racks as a whole, like, mm -hmm. dude, there is some shit in there. That will completely change your fucking life. He's very, very talented. At what he's he nuts. He's Shout out good. to Bill. Yeah, or Mister, whatever he likes yeah. to be called. Doctor Bill. <laughs> he's super dope. Mister Doctor Bill. Oh, Senior cool, Bill. cool. Uh, uh, a really complex Pro Q3 that I guess I just never turned back on. That's fine. Not so needed. let's just delete that. Pretend like it never existed. Um, okay, drum bus. I love to use on hat groups. Okay. Uh, why don't we just turn all this shit off and uh, we can. Oh, it's only two things. So let's turn that off. And then I'll turn the drum bus on. So, And then with the drum bus. I mean, a lot of it is perceived volume for sure. Yeah. But um, I really like the crunch, the drive, compress on drum bus. It like adds a lot of like mid range back into, because like, especially with like kind of house music that I made in the beginning and uh, like the UKG stuff and whatever, like a lot of the like high mids can live in the hats and the tops. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, if you take too much of that out or don't have enough of it there, mixes can feel really, really empty. Yeah. So that's normally what I use drum bus for. Sometimes, depending on the song, I'll also like really crank the transients like this. Yeah. Um, but it didn't, this, it, it really depends. Like some songs I want my drums super, super tight. And sometimes I want them really like loose and flowy. And this is more of that like flowy kind of shit. And then with this, let's do an AB, I guess, with the hat betterer. <laughs> yeah. It's just, a collection of things that are just kind of smoothing smoothing things out 
making it a little bit more pleasing to the ears, right? Yeah, you cut out all the lows. Yeah. Show from the highs. Yeah, because, like, the drum bus is bringing in a lot. So then this... Because, like, but without the drum bus... It's a little yeah. too shrill. And it's just not doing much. Honestly, never even opened this thing up. I just said hat batterer, and I played around with this one big knob, and <laughs> I liked how it sounded all together. Like, for all intents and purposes, it probably doesn't need any of that stuff, mm. but in the context of the song, which is what is most important, not when it's soloed, I just, I'll, I'll play the drop with it off and then pop it back on. It's very, it's very subtle, but yeah. it, it like, it's more present for sure. Yeah. And it's like, I have this constant battle where like I'll overcook my hats and they're too present in the mix and then I'll turn them down too much. And then all the energy in the song is gone. So it's about finding that happy balance where like they're present enough, but they're not overpowering the entire record claps. So in this situation, it's almost like these claps are kind of like the supporting claps, right? They're like, yeah, they're just they're like more under. like low and chunky, right? Because these claps are like pretty like yeah. high mids to highs. They don't have a ton of weight. And then these ones, they're support. Yeah. They're also, if you're listening on headphones, a lot more mono. Mm -hmm. That's my issue with claps and snares in uh, like full loops is a lot of times they'll be too wide. Oh yeah, that's true, huh? Because people are probably auto panning and shit. They're they're well. Their I mean, if are... you make anything more stereo, it's going to sound more better, right. right? And so sometimes I'll take some of the sides out, but in this case, it's like I'm just adding more mid information in. Mm -hmm. So I'm, pro we... I'm probably jumping ahead. <laughs> Jump ahead. Jump. What's up? Um, you talking about the master? Are you... No, no, no. Not yet. Um, are you still clipping your kicks and snares? Are uh, you still using G-clip or are you... Uh, K-clip, clip, yeah. K-clip. I just do it at the end, generally. It really depends on the song. Yeah. But um, I'll, I'll always clip every bus for sure. Have you uh, have you tried gold clip yet? No. The Schwab one? No. It's so expensive. The FL clip? Yeah. Basically, it's like, it's the, like FL's clipper. Yeah. Um, I'll fucking try it. It's pretty sick. It doesn't have that solo button that we love. Oh yeah, so see that's like, a that's a pretty big deal breaker to me. So you I can't know. you can't tell how much you're actually clipping. No, I mean there's there's a readout. So instead of a, a solo button, there's just like a graph, and you can see where the line is actually clipping, but you hmm. can't you can hear start, it. You can start to hear it, I think, but it's, it's, I think it's really, I think you really should show people how to use a clipper, how you taught us, because I think... Yeah, I mean, maybe it makes more sense on the bass group, because it's there's probably more... Or actually, no, it's fine. Because, dude, the, so, that, that, that button is so helpful, yeah. dude. It's like... So, here, I'll just go right here and kind of loop this. And most clippers don't have this this feature. It's the reason I use it. Yeah. Also, I think what's cool about it is, I think it, it makes it so that... Everybody can actually understand what a clipper is doing. Yeah. So, and I've actually kind of changed how I go about using it since the last time we talked. Oh. So before what I would do, just for everyone who's watching, if you looked right down here, uh, there's this dry wet mix knob, but right next to it, there's this little solo button or a Delta button, I guess it would be called. And when you turn that on, Fuck's a delta. So the delta between the dry signal and the clipped signal. So the delta oh, would like be what's being clipped, right? Yeah, I know, but is that like a official, like, why are they calling it the delta? I yeah, guess yeah, what... yeah. So the delta is like what's being removed. Okay, so, like, so that's in, actual... in Soothe, there's a delta button. Oh, you're button. right. You're right. Okay. okay. Uh... So you can hear what's being yeah. cut out. Right. Um, like a spin knob. I'm like, what the fuck's a spin do? Fucking, you know what I mean? When on I reverb? That? Yeah, just in general. Sometimes that's spinning those... the chorus. Okay, well, you're going to fuck me, dude. <laughs> Why don't you uh, fucking t start a YouTube channel? Teach people how to fucking make music. God damn it. I don't, fuck I, you. I know I'm fucking stupid. I'm just <laughs> okay. Are we good? Yeah, we're good, dude. I had a moment there. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Danny. You're so, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Take a deep breath. So what I used to do is um, I would turn on the Delta, right? And Oh, fucking Jesus, fuck. Let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's uh, solo the drums. 
I'll, I'll, I'll take the threshold back up. So what I used to do with you guys is I would have the drums. I would turn on the Delta like this and I would basically just turn it up until I got to the level of clipping that I felt was chill. Like that's not perceivable at all. Yeah. Right. And then what I figured out was happening is I was running all my channels so hot because like I get I get everything balanced to a certain level before I do the clipping. Right. When you turn up the input gain until you're clipping, you're just turning up the loudness of that entire group. Right. But if you want to retain the relative volumes of everything, the better way to do it, the smarter way to do it is to turn on the delta and just drag this threshold down. Mm. Because then everything's staying at the same volume, you're just clipping. It's very smart. Does that make sense? Yeah. I would have thought that you were going to link it. Yeah, I thought we linked it. I thought, I thought you that's were what you taught it. us is that you link it and you go but it's barely you can barely oh, hear yeah, it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So at so at one point when you were teaching us yeah, you're like, this is what it's doing. Yeah, so so that is the same way to kind of do it. I like the threshold thing. Yeah, no, I like but, the threshold thing too. But what ended up happening a lot of times is I wouldn't link it and I would mm -hmm. just like turn everything yeah. up, right? Um, and so this way, like, I don't know, I've just started using the threshold instead just to like make it so that I'm not actually doing anything that's actually adding volume. So if we play this, I think I had it at minus 1.3, 1.3. How can I not get there now? Okay. So you'll see it's not actually hitting zero. Yeah. You know? Mm, that's but huge. It's, that's it's, huge. But it's at the volume that I wanted it at. And that's kind of the idea behind clipping, right? Mm -hmm. Is that you're adding a little bit of headroom on all of your groups so that when you go into your master, you have, even you're run, even though you're running hot as fuck, you have a little bit of headroom to work with, right? Which really helps. Like what I've learned from you is it really helps the drums and the low end, especially with the master that you run too. Yeah, uh, which, which has also changed a bit. Yeah, well, I've saved what you what you did on your sub. Yeah, and I use that when I'm like really. That's trying also to changed a lot. Yeah, I'm curious about that too. Yeah. But I can hear the low end in this track sounds really, really yeah, good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we can go through that. Real quick. Yeah, because I think this is all intertwined with the drums and the lower yeah, and the yeah, clipping yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I just want to take a quick second to celebrate the anniversary of Gorilla. It's been an entire year since we released the Gorilla series, and it's no secret why it's the most popular pack to date. So we've decided to do something really cool. We decided to create the ultimate Gorilla anniversary bundle for you guys. This bundle is going to include 400 serum presets, a ton of samples, and 11 Ableton remake project files from some of your favorite artists like Skrillex, Virtual Riot and Fred again. For those of you that have already purchased Gorilla's early access, don't worry, we got you covered. For the first time ever, we are actually including an expansion pack for Gorilla available on our site now. It's going to have new serum presets in the same style of multi-genre and of course, five new Ableton remake project files from Skrillex and Fred again. And if you missed out on your chance to get all of the original project files from the early access bundle, we got those on our site for you too. We got a ton of different options for you guys celebrating the holidays all the way up to the end of the year. So make sure you guys go check out the link in the description and go get your copy of your gorillas ultimate anniversary bundle today let's jump back into the podcast um i have a i call it a sam sam i changed it though i changed it to what i liked it because you had a saturate where you were running your saturator you had a saturator and a pro q3 and then you had my rack that i saved from you and it had like a q that was essentially a dynamic q in the low end that was kind of pushing yeah yeah to yeah. get it louder um and i changed it to where i just took off the pro q and i just used the saturator and then i'll okay. adjust it however i want that's uh, what i was doing the eq isn't actually yeah, making anything it. louder it's making so oh this... that's what it was doing it was subduing it not dynamically high yeah, yeah, yeah so this rack is basically just an amalgamation of tips and tricks that i've stolen from other people so if you if you can see this this preset is called Buquez Sub Fletched, Buca, Buquez like uh, Buquez Finest Rhythm Dubstep guys. Okay, I can't remember who it wasn't them, but someone that I know who's a producer gave me this, and so this is basically a sub EQ, and this dynamic EQ is based on the Fletcher Munson curve. Ah, okay. So the higher up your sub frequency goes, it's kind of 
tapping it down a little bit oh, to be a little bit really more consistent. Nice, sometimes I'll leave it on, sometimes I take it, it off. It just depends on really what depends. your sub harmonic frequencies are those two, the W is what I call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so then this saturator trick, yep. which has gotten way sicker now that there's this amount low that you can change mm. on the new saturator. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a trick that I learned from a Twitter post from Icon Collective. Oh, I definitely think this sounds the best going into a master. Adding this, I took off the L two. That's what I did. Is I took off the L two. Oh, that's Sorry. a huge mistake. Yeah, but I, I I did it for for whatever reason. I thought it made sense in my whatever. Okay. Process. I mean, do whatever makes you happy. No, it's what I, whatever I, my master's different than yours too. So yeah, it depends. Yeah. But, but sorry, go on. So the whole idea behind this was, it was literally just like one of these like tips and tricks from Icon Collective. Yeah. It just said, if you use hard curve and turn your drive down to like around minus six, it adds some really nice harmonics to your sub. And I was like, that sounds fucking crazy. And then I did it one day and I've been doing it ever since. And it's been wow. like eight years. You can really tell when you have a master on with this yeah, thing, bro, at least what I've learned. I mean, you can tell regardless. So then, this. Wait, can you A B that real quick with that sat the sat just the saturator? Yeah. Yeah, dude, it fucking helps out a lot. I'll give you the my my fucking broken ass Sam rack, or we'll remake it now. <laughs> well, no, this is with the new saturator, right? Yeah, but he's yeah. The difference is is that he has the low amount percentage that he's able to adjust now. Yeah, which like on to be completely honest, I think it should be at zero percent for the way that I used to use it. Yeah, or maybe minus twenty two is what the the legacy would have been. I don't know why it was set at minus twenty two because this song okay. was done before this update. Yeah, so that I, I didn't do that. That That's was probably bass. That's probably what the bass knob was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Good point. Because bass added low end. I always thought. I don't know which way minus or or plus. Maybe that's what the low end adjusts. Yeah, maybe now. that's a good point, Danny. Um. So, but yeah, that's that's what that does. It's just adding harmonics, and then I added a Saturn. <laughs> Some more saturation after that. I like this. Okay. Um, this and the space control at the end. I learned from a video from Luca Predalesi. Okay. Yes. Do you know, you know Luca? Yep. Yes. We're very if you don't know who Luca is, he's like a very very well known, very successful uh, mixing and mastering engineer. He works with you know. Diplo and Jack U and all these people and he did a video on how he processes low end and something that I really liked. I mean, honestly, I think that this Saturn is basically doing the same exact thing as the saturator. So I could probably go one or the other, but I've been running it like this now for however long and I just like it. So Saturn has like a, a little bit more color than saturator. Yeah, find, for sure it does. Yeah. And this is also only really affecting this area it's really not doing much here it's really just affecting the upper harmonics the upper harmonics yeah yeah, yeah. so it's just giving a little bit more oomph to the harmonics this is the limiter that i use that danny for whatever reason decided to I, take off i figured out why you know why because i stopped paying for the wave shit and that's yeah. why well you could use any fucking limiter I know, but I, I don't know. I just ended up So let me it, so. explain to people that will actually maybe listen to me why this is an important step. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is a trick that I learned from, I believe, one of the Adventure Club guys. And they were basically saying that you use a limiter to like, I think what the conversation was that I was having with them is like, cause you know, Adventure Club makes very melodic music, yeah. right? So they have low end notes that are gonna be bouncing all over the place. Sometimes they're in a higher register, sometimes they're in a lower register. Right, it's pretty common to limit your sub before going into a master. That's yeah, a very but, common practice. But the reason to do it is that you basically bring your threshold down to where it's just barely gonna hit gain reduction on the most powerful note mm -hmm. right oh, okay and so then like the g if there's a g like g is always gonna be yeah the most g f e flat right. whatever your root is but it generally will help glue all the other notes and especially with all that all the harmonics you're adding with, sure. the, with the saturation it just helps bring all of the notes a little bit more even mm -hmm. right because you don't want that like b or c sharp or whatever to just be like completely fucking lost yeah. in the mix so that's that and then the space control. Oh, this is new. Yeah, uh, is this, this a, is this a Luca? Yeah, this is Luca's thing. It's it's just like a you could use like isotope imager or oh, whatever. Okay. What it is is 
everything from 20 hertz up to what does that say 170 something yeah 175 maybe is 100 percent mono right yeah then everything from 175 to a thousand is super wide because that's where all the harmonics that you're adding are going to live Right. So instead of actually doing like a mid bass, you can tech essentially do it here if you saturate. No, I still add a mid bass for sure, but this just I I feel like helps glue the sub and the mids together a lot better. This probably takes control of instead of uh, BX saturator, right? Yeah, which I never use. You yeah, never BX use saturator it. does have a mon. Yeah, you're, you, it has it, the mono yeah. knob on the bottom. Right. That but makes yeah, sense. It, it's just essentially like this is like a super popular technique in like hip-hop a lot of their beats are just basically 808s yeah. right so like that's a really easy way to make your 808s feel super super wide mm. and fill up the entire spectrum yeah is that you take that like you know 150 to 1k distort the shit out of it and make it super wide so it can fill up the entire spectrum. That's very you know? interesting. Yeah, I like how it's all the way width, too. That's like... Yeah, and then I have 100% width above that, but, I mean, if we play it, there's probably nothing even playing up there. I think you could also do it with the utility, because I've been playing with the bass mono. I think that's what that does, is it tells Yeah, you but the... fuck, fuck utility. It's not going to work as good as yeah. this, yeah. This looks have you fancier. ever have you ever a bead going, like, referencing a song in mono using the Ableton utility and then use the mono on something like the imager from oh, yeah. Ozone. <laughs> I already know. I don't need to. <laughs> it's like not the same thing <laughs> it's at all. It's definitely not. Yeah, They're mono. Yeah. yeah. I like their width on it. I like that. I'm saying yeah. People... So so I will say I use the the utility right here set up in mid side mode. Well, I guess this is on my subgroup, so it's irrelevant. But um, actually, it's not. It's not. So now we could actually like, like if you have your, your utility set up normally in width mode, if you turn that up, it's just going to add stereo to everything right yeah mid side mode lets you solo the sides or mm -hmm. solo the mids so i use it for like referencing so like let's just turn it only to sides and hear what the sub sounds like nothing cool so i guess this is doing absolutely fucking nothing then is what we're learning well, well actually, no I, that. I i think the crossover is just don't you have to change the crossover for the utility? Put bass mono on? No. Nah. Interesting. Because, like, maybe it's not doing... That has to be doing something. Well, if you don't have anything... The only reason why I wouldn't be doing something is... I mean, you here, you can, you can hear it doing something right now. Oh, yeah, it's definitely... If it's headphones, you can definitely tell. Yeah. Maybe it's the utility. Maybe it's not as wide as we think it is in the in the center. Let's Luca see. just made a plug in that doesn't do anything. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so sick. <laughs> yeah, see, look, there's not really a lot of information in the in the mids. No, it's definitely doing something. Yeah. Well, wait, what does this do? I don't know. This this plugin is so confusing. All I know is I put it on there this and I feel like it's it... your sub sounds great, dude. That's, so that's here's here's matters. with nothing. Yeah, big difference. Oh yeah, huge. And also, just just for full context, the sub sounds completely blown out there when you turn out on everything, but that's because the sub is also now running into my full processing for my bass group up here and my master. So like when you solo something like that and you have your master and all of these extra plugins on, it's just getting louder and louder and louder, but that's not how it's really going to sound in the oh, mix. Oh yeah, you're right. You know because, what I mean? Because there's Can't other things that are going in too. Yeah, like, yeah. like in this bass group right this heavy side chain is what i call it jesus that bass is so sick because there's all that extra information now the sub isn't super loud and distorted because it's it's coming in with extra information right. it's getting pushed down a little bit right yeah. there's no pre-fader button in ableton in Pro Tools, you can. There's a switch. Where yeah, you but can who listen. fucking cares about Pro Tools, dude? If you're watching this video, you don't <laughs> fucking care about. Well, in Pro, Pro Tools, Tools, they have a pre-fader button. Fucking hey, dude, that would have helped you. Loser, dude. Citrus ass. <laughs> <laughs> that would have helped you in this in this exact scenario, dude. No, but hey, I don't I fucking hear care, my sub dude. Before, without my master. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. 
fucking, <laughs> what do I look like? A fucking guy that actually cares? Yeah, I guess you went to Icon, dude. Yeah, I'll yeah, keep my yeah. citrus just, pro tools to myself. Yeah, we just run and gun. Okay, you want to you want to go over this base, Danny? Yes. Okay, so I believe you said it's a it's a it's the same base, but it's it, I'm assuming it's changing because it doesn't sound yeah. redux throughout the rest of this. So I think Ooh, that's sizzly. That's what it was originally, or maybe this is what it was. Same kind of thing, right? So let's turn all this shit off. Oops, sorry. <laughs> it's just like a, you know, low end y something. Tech housey bass. Uh oh, Sam special in it patch? Yeah. Sam Spash. This guy can sound design? So what is this controlling? That's controlling the wavetable. That's just bringing the sustain and maybe a filter up somewhere. Nope, just the sustain, I guess. Um, no, it's it's definitely opening. controlling. It's definitely controlling a filter. It's slow opening on that first one. Wow. And then it shortens. Okay, so it's so you're using that macro. Yeah, maybe to kind of throw it a little bit. That's I can't. Cool. I can't remember. This is oh this thing. This is a Sam special, I remember, yeah. the multiband thing. Yeah, so this is, I won't say it's like a contested concept externally, but internally I'm deciding if I like it or not anymore. I still use it. But the idea behind this uh, little rack that I made here, I just wanted a way to easily process just the low end of any channel and just the mids and the highs of any channel, right? So what I did is I put multiband dynamics that aren't doing anything on every single one. And then on the low end, it's only soloing the lows, right? So you're only going to hear... Well, that's that's going through all this fucking processing, so that's not going to sound right. Right? And that's only the mids and the highs. Mm -hmm. So then that way it's really easy. You don't have to use an EQ that's going to create any that's phasing cool. issues or whatever. That being said, though, using multi-bands like this could also be causing phasing issues. But so I just don't really fucking system. care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't know um, what the curve is. But I mean, you would think like the 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 cutoffs are all the same on all of them. It's just yeah. in it, right? So it should theoretically just be playing the same exact signal, just split. It's also faster too, way faster. And I just feel like it feels cleaner. Yeah. Like wherever this low end knob is, that's what's getting chopped off, right? Like For anything sure. 120 hertz and below. It's not getting filtered off with like some rolling Q curve. Yeah, it's just gone. It's just gone. Yeah. I don't have to think about it. Like you said, in the interest of time, it's really easy for me to throw this on, yeah. click a button, and I just have. Right? So then Roar, that's the new saturation plugin in Ableton 12 that I guess you've never seen yet, nope. which blows my fucking mind. <laughs> The amount of sound design shit you guys could do with this plugin for your videos is mind blowing to me. It's funny the the more we do more the, the more we try to just do everything in Serum because yeah. it's it, it's more it makes more sense for our packs. Yeah, yeah, I get that. You know what I mean? But yeah. yes, it, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of things that I am like me personally, not him. Like yeah, it's really yeah. me. I'm a, just asleep on, and I don't know. That's just the way I kind of do it. Yeah. But I am trying. I I do. Since working with you, you know, I, I do take little things, you know, I yeah. start using third party, third party shit, you know, it's yeah. not because I don't want to, it's literally yeah. just because I, maybe, maybe I just get comfortable in what I, what I do. Yeah. Maybe that's why you got to have friends to show well, you new shit. You yeah. Know? This I know we don't have, I, cool. I know we don't have much time, so we'll save the therapy session yeah, for after fine. and we'll, we'll talk we'll about keep, it. We'll keep going. So wait, can, so can we, can we talk about your side chain? <laughs> Please. Wait, do you not want to? You don't want to get through the rest of the base. I, oh, I, mean, I, I, I thought we did. She's it's jumping fine. out of it. Bad, I mean, yeah, we're yeah. still talking about roar. Yeah. Yes, I mean the roar is like the main sound here. Yeah. So this saturator A sounds amazing. Has a lot of cool features. My favorite is probably the resample filter it has, which is basically like a Redux, mm -hmm. but within the sampler, like or I mean within the saturator. So if I turn it off, and then with it on, yeah, it's sizzly. It's like a ring. Yeah, it's Instead a it's a sample and hold. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I just added instead of an EQ. Fuck yeah. I just more added roar. more <laughs> more saturation. Yeah. But with a notch filter, to cut out some of that ringing or some frequency yeah. I I didn't like. God, that's fucking massive, dude. That's oh, and then fuck. and then this, uh, no, I'm using this noise injection. 
Oh, so that's like a new saturation. Yeah, sort of so it's like function. like if I turn that to like sine wave. Can you add LFOs on this thing? Ooh, yeah, yeah, it has it has nice. a full modulation panel oh, with sick. like okay. envelopes and LFOs and shit. Dude, that's that noise injection, dude. It's tight. That's huge. It's cock injection right there. That's a um, cock injection. And, and and bro, like this is just in serial. It has parallel, oh, multi band, mid side, like. Oh. Shit. There's a whole feedback section. Like you could get really gnarly with this shit. I, I use it like I a fucking opened it. <laughs> I use it like a fucking simpleton. Okay, so then here's my little mid side or uh, a low. Let's call it a, a high pass filter that I use. Yeah, I like essentially that. A, a abomination of a high pass filter. Yep. Uh, EQ three just taking a little bit of the annoying. shit out. Got a lot of space in this sound too. Clipper and then a filter. And then I still didn't like how it sounded. So I bounced the whole thing. This is a new thing for me that I'm really like going all in on, which is just committing to sounds, resampling them to audio, and then doing what I need to do from there mm -hmm. instead of trying to fix it all in MIDI and just you get lost in the sauce. Yeah. So then I got it closer to where and this is to be fair this is like multiple resamples in yeah right like i resampled what you heard did some eqing maybe an extra bit of saturation some modulation resampled did it again did it again and then got it to here and i was like that's close but i still want these more subtle notes like these ones i still wanted those more subby right like it had too much mid-range yeah it felt too like tacky so then i figured i have it all in audio anyways why don't i just split this as if it's two different sounds and then process that first hit like it's a big bass uh, uh, so it started as which is almost the same it's just more clean right oh it's super clean dude and then this one sizzler i got like very scoopy and like yeah just kind of like I'm using a fucking shitload of noise injection on this one. Oh, this one. Okay, so <laughs> I'm I'm really abusing roar. So this one's set at 11 percent with a bunch of noise injection, just on the high end. So it's basically oh, like yeah, a parallel. Like you're cutting out just the high end and then adding a bunch of noise to that. And then I have it rolling off all that high end. <laughs> Take it away. Put it there. Um, yeah. This diode shape on the roar is like the coolest fucking way to naturally low pass a sound. It literally just like, if you use the diode clipper on Roar, it like just cuts everything like five to six K and above. Oh, really? In like such a natural, like musical kind of way. Oh, cool. It's really, really nice. So like without it. Yeah. So it's just a bunch of addition and subtraction until you get it sitting where you want it. And then the finished product. Don't lose your head. And like the goal was to make that these like poop, 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 almost feel like there wasn't a bass there. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just enough to add weight to the song. But, and it's, it's kind of crazy. Like I'm actually glad we dove into this because I feel like, even myself as a producer, like when I try to get really subtle subby sounds, like you think you have to scoop everything out, but you still need a lot of mid yeah. and high information in it. It's just about where you set it, like level wise in the song, right? And for those that aren't wearing headphones, like just like hearing them, I could just tell how much movement, like it's really loud in my headphones right now, but the, yeah, the yeah. headphones are moving so much. Like there's literally so much air pushing yeah, into my head right now that I know that this is going to sound amazing in a stadium. Like this is going to sound great. Yeah. I hope so. I can tell, bro. I know headphones. Okay. All right. I know how to thanks, mix. This thanks, shit. dog. Um, okay. So, so side chain. Yes. Yeah. Side chain. Now you okay. do something super interesting. You, as as far as I remember, we were processing the side chain uh, of the bases. He was processing everything, and then it would like he would clip. There we go. Is that what you're talking about? How he would go into a clipper? Oh like, yeah, yeah. No. Okay, here I'll show you. Yeah. So generally speaking, the the plugins change sometimes, but like my bus processing is yeah, your SSLG almost, bus. 
Uh, actually, it used well, to no, not. This is, it used this to is not different. Be yeah, this it used to be different. the API. Oh, you're right. It was the API. It's the yeah. 25 hunch. Yeah, which I think. Yeah, I'm still using it on the drums here. I love. I it love how it good. sounds. Do you still Honestly, have it on the master too? Uh, let's find out. Uh, or the glue. The the master. Yeah, the is, yep, there it is. Atomic's actual glue. Not there it is, version. dude. It sounds better. It does. It's I true. Agree. So my point is, for my buses, I'll normally do compression. Maybe some saturation, maybe some EQ, and then just a clipper. I, it's just really everything should sound the way it's going to sound and just bring it all together and make it feel nice and warm and like a big hug. So like without the compressor, and then with... I guess this is a bad example because it's like a pretty like... I mean, we could hear it because we have headphones on, but... No, I can hear it. It's just You can hear it just squeezing it just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't need to be too much. And then I've found, and this ironically is like a copy-paste from my master chain, but this magic preset on Saturn 2, it's just like the input of your signal is like modulating all of these different parameters in Saturn. I don't know what the fuck it does. It just makes everything sound better. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I love how it sounds. Maybe if we listen to the second drop, I'll be able to AB it a little bit better. Uh, where's the build? Just, I'm just gonna play it for context. Don't lose your head. That's also that same sound, by the way. Ooh. That's all from one preset. That's sick. That's hilarious. Uh, so if we just solo this where that big hit is, you'll probably be able to hear the saturator better. So here's without it. And then with it. Oh, yeah. Crisp. It's really, really fucking subtle, but it, it just makes everything sound nice. And then at the end, just a nice honking fucking side chain. Don't touch it. Don't even try. Don't update it. Don't even. I mean, the only thing that I do is just make sure that I'm getting, like, why game. can't I freeze the fucking thing? Yeah, isn't there, like, a button to do that? I forgot. But whatever. You can see where the kick is, right? And I just, like, am perfectly kind of sculpting the audio around the kick so that it's, like, not so much of a pump, right? Yeah. Like, it gives it groove for sure, but, like, certain songs... Like, you want the sidechain to be super over-exaggerated, yeah. right? And then a lot of times, for me right now, it's like, I just want the music to get out of the way of the kick for long enough that the kick has impact, and I'm not causing any phase issues in the low end, mm -hmm. and then get right back to where it needs to be, right? Yeah. So, like, there's a little bit of pump, but, like, not a ton, right? Where, like... Like, uh, like more like classic side chain is like this. Yeah. The electro side chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Which sometimes is a vibe. Yeah, it works right? on some certain things. Yeah. But, yeah, I would I would say almost all the time I have this little nubbin right about here, maybe over here, and then maybe like that. I just, I literally just like trace it like a kid. You're just tracing, you know? yeah. Just like that. And this could even come up. I mean, like, if I really wanted to get freaky with it, you could, like. Just the curve. But that's like if you're really gonna get yeah. fucking crazy. And Shaper Box you know? does such a good job of actually deleting the actual sound. <laughs> like it like yeah. literally is no sound when it's fully on, which is really nice. Yeah. That's what I learned from doing that with you. You're never gonna get that from a compressor. Yeah. Before we wrap this, what what do you what is this hitting? Is this minus yeah, five? Yeah, it's loud as fuck. Yeah. Or at dude. least it seems like. Yeah, I've like actually I've finally I've finally hit the point where I'm actually mixing records so loud now that I have to stop. 
Are you at like Subtronics levels? Because this is the loudest shit I've ever heard from you. At least no. maybe my headphones are that turned up, but they are turned up a lot. But I mean, let's see. I think it's probably hitting like around five and a half. I mean, that's still that's that's loud. That's loud. Don't lose your head. Oh, this one's not that bad. Oh, yeah, it's oh, minus yeah, seven. Minus maybe seven. my cans are just loud. That's crazy. Is it really only minus seven? Well, perceived loudness, it feels very loud. Maybe I didn't overcrank this one because I knew where it was going. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it sounds really good, though. Thank you. <laughs> that was... Don't lose your head. Yeah, I mean, I knew it was a more low endy track. I didn't, I wasn't really worried about like perceived loudness or anything. Mm -hmm. But like, there's a there's a record. I can open it up really fast. It'll take me two seconds. Nice. This remix that I'm working on right now. I don't know what the fuck happened because like I I was just working on it in my studio and I was like, yeah, this sounds great. And then I played it out this weekend and it's like by far and wide the loudest thing <laughs> in my set. Like, and like, not just the low end, because like the low end is way overcooked too, but the drums are so fucking loud, dude. I don't understand how I did this, but like here. Sometimes I, it just happens with songs. Like, it's so weird. What's up guys? Want to take a quick break from nerding out to tell you about our brand new Black Friday special, Only Bass. If you are a bass producer in need of some serious inspiration and next level sound design, this bundle is for you. All presets are drop ready, including macros and drop rhythms that can be customized for endless possibilities. With over 500 filthy basses, you'll be surprised at how fast you think. Stop scrolling through washed up serum presets and start making drops hard again. You don't even need to hide this purchase from your boyfriend or girlfriend. Stop gooning and start producing. Trust me, you'll be exploding with new ideas. <laughs> P.S. There's absolutely no plucks, no pads, just drop ready basses for your next track. Now let's get you back into the episode. I, I almost want to turn the like master down for a sec because it's like it's like really loud. Here, I'm going to turn my computer down and then I'll, I'll crank it back up. up there yep i actually think i turned it down too but like here if i crank this like it like dude and on a system i was like it's almost too loud now to the point where like it doesn't sound good <laughs> And I guess it's like perceived loudness really is in mid range, and that bass is yeah. so mid range heavy. Sure. Just because of how I processed it, I guess. I just, I fucking. Especially just, for a house record, too, minus five. Yeah, that's, that's loud as fuck. Yeah. Bro. Super loud. I like that you're getting crispier with it. Yeah, that's crispy as fuck. That, that reverb actually does a lot. That's a little short of a haul. Yeah, sometimes you need it, man. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I literally, I played this and I was like, I can't tell if it sounds really fucking good or like actually too loud. Cause like I, I hear it on these headphones and like, I don't, I can't pick out any problems. It doesn't sound like, you know, when some, like you make a song so loud, almost just like for, to make a point that yeah. like your song is loud and then it gets <laughs> shrill and like aggressive. Yeah. yeah. This song is not, like, there's nothing sticking out to me that's like, this is painful to my ear. Mm -hmm. Well, did you do the Sam record box trick? Yeah. With the this one? Box. Before yeah. you, uh, Sam and, check. and was it just, just red or, uh, or blue or whatever it is? So red would mean there's almost too much low end. Yeah. Which this is. But it looks good in record box. That's but it what looks we're good. Asking. Yeah. Yeah. And like, 
also having too much low end would negatively affect your perceived loudness. True. You know? Yeah. Because perceived loudness is all in the mids and the highs. So, and especially the way I master, if you overcook your low end, everything else is going to get swallowed. Mm -hmm. Right? And I've actually had a problem with that recently where like my low ends are really fucking loud. Like almost too loud. I've figured out some way to overcook my low end (laughs) and also have the mids and highs still completely present. And now I'm like stuck in this position where like if I turn the low end down, the mix starts to feel empty. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe just because I'm so used to it. Because, like, you know, a really good mix, like, the low end isn't overpowering. It's just in that right pocket where it's, like, present and loud, but not, like, swallowing the mix, right? So, I don't know. There's so many components that goes into that, though. It could be, like, the side chain. It could be so many different things. Yeah. You know, the way way you're limiting it, if you're clipping it. I think it's, like, I don't even know what to call it, but it's, like, the pre-master you're you're processing before it even gets yeah. to your master yeah, yeah. and you're you're cooking it like when we were working on a bunch of songs together like i was trying to balance out the pre-processing mm-hmm. before it was getting yeah. mastered yeah. you know to so, see what would sound better yeah so one trick that i've started doing i i found this on a youtube video somewhere um do you have you guys ever used god particle yeah I stopped using it a long time ago because I didn't like the limiter on it. Uh, It just like, it distorts so easily. And then I was talking to someone and they were like, told me about this video that I watched. And what you do is you use your God particle as you start the song, basically. You turn off the limiter, you leave all the settings as it is. And it's almost like having a fake master on your bus while you're making the song. And it will kind of show you and tell you like inform you of where to put all the sounds Mm. in like a mixed perspective. You know what I mean? Like volume wise? Yeah. So you talking about those little squares? Well, not only that, but just like, you know how like if you work with a master on, it's going to impact the mixed decisions. For sure. Right? Sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. This is like having a much less intense master on that will still impact where you set your vocals, where you set your Mm. this, where you set your that. And the idea is that it'll actually help you naturally make decisions to make a more level mix mm. that that would be a cool exercise yeah i want cool, to try like, that video test you know yeah i mean i've been doing it for i don't know like two or three weeks now and, and it's dope i i feel like my mixes have gotten much easier to manage have you tried their new plugin that just came out the drum one i really want to it looks yeah. fucking it looks sick, so dude. fucking dope it's such a plug-in whore i love it <laughs> i want to get it too I just saw it and I'm like, oh, dude. It could I'm just be great afraid. For... I'm just afraid that it's like really for like like hip hop drums yeah. or like live drums oh, and yeah. shit. You know, there's a lot of plugins like that that are different genre oriented. Yeah, you kind of stay away from those kind of plugins. It's yeah. like yeah, the but... drum bus. Like there's transient knobs. Give me a transient all designer. All this. Yeah, all. but I like shaping sounds more than. Oh I yeah, like. see, yeah. see, look at look at the drum bus on this shit. Like. It's only at seven oh, percent down. Yeah, you don't use it all. You, you use it when I've seen you use it. It's light percentage. Even at seven percent, it makes that much of a dude. difference. Yeah. It just everything just yeah gets so tight. Well, dude, this has been amazing, bro. Thank you so much. That's that's some huge sauce for the for the community. For man. the little kids out there. Yeah, oh wait, dude. here's one more that uh, Danny's gonna hate. So I don't know if you've seen this yet. Uh, the guys that made Soothe, Eek Sound, made the sister plugin to Soothe called Bloom. And it almost does the opposite of Soothe. where it Like Spiff? Y- what the fuck is this? So it... it EDM master? It uses <laughs> algorithms to analyze your sounds and musically add... But isn't that what Spiff does? No, that's like for transients and shit. Yeah, Spiff I thought is like that a was what the sale of, of Spiff... Well, at least that's what someone told me, but maybe they were wrong. Is that like essentially Spiff is like... The boosting of the good frequencies and no, and that's I mean maybe, but all I know is Bloom does it and it does it. Are the you best. putting it on the master? Yeah. Oh, so I found this preset called EDM Master. Sick. <laughs> so dope. And here I'll just play it. Or I'll put I'll I'll A B it. Wow. When did that come out? And it's only like 66%, but like... And it's what, $300? Yeah. 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 They're fucking it assholes. Is. It is. Yeah, but I, I I've it. been fucking obsessed with this thing. We gotta try that out. Yeah, that's some that's We're some getting sauce. It. Yeah. We're right. getting it, dude. All right, that's that's the only sauce. Buy some packs here. so we can... <laughs>
<laughs> so we could buy two copies. <laughs> yeah, I still have Gilfoss. Danny doesn't have Gilfoss yet. Yeah. Because they only give you one. That's crazy. License. Do you also have Gilfoss? Gilfoss, dude. Yeah. He does that. Gills. Well, that really great. Gilfoss. <laughs> I didn't know that you sounded like that. Do you know that he calls Kazo Kaizo? Yeah, Kaizo. Oh, so you're one of those dude. guys. He still thinks it's He's Kaizo. For sure, it's Kaizo. It's Kazo. Kaizo and Cry. Thank you guys so much for coming to the excellent show. Thank you, Sam, for being here. An amazing production. You're the man, dude. Thank you, dude. Do you call Nets guy Netsky? Yes, Netsky, for sure. He for sure Fuck. does. Yep. He for sure does. That's so funny. <laughs> I do call him Netsky. You do? <laughs> totally serious, too. I didn't know it was Nets guy. Is that for real? Yeah. Netsky. His name isn't N-E-T-S-K-E-E. -E. Yeah. When you look up at the sky, are you looking at the skis? The skis. Check out the ski, bro. I guess that the is ski a good looks point. beautiful today. I guess dude. that is a good point. I thought it was one of those just English language <laughs> words, you know. Oh, you got a Bye. Thing. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Sam. Go check them out. See you Odyssey, guys later. Warriors. And uh, this song is coming out when? October 25th. Uh, there we go. October 25th. There it is. Probably already out. Love you, dude. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe. Goodbye. Netski. Netski.